day one of my uh, little excursion. Uh, this is the public boat launch and park area in Terrace Bay, Ontario. And here's Firefly all suited up and, uh, and ready to go. This is on, uh, on Lake Superior. We're heading out to the Slate Islands, which are about, uh, I don't know, 12k, about uh, just under 7 nautical miles, roughly in that direction, somewhere out in the fog. It's actually quite a lovely day, but no visibility with the fog. But uh, yeah. looking forward to uh, experiencing the, the Slate Islands and uh, seeing what uh, the big lake has to offer. Hopefully nothing too extreme for me. find a, a nice spot to uh, spend the night and be out of the wind and uh, rain that's coming tomorrow. Day one inside the Slate Islands. Finally uh, we're able to get the sail up and uh, sliding along downwind. It's gorgeous rugged country here. I'm just going to be looking for a, uh, a spot to anchor I think just uh, to the left around that corner might be a spot for the night. So day two in the Slate Islands. Uh, what we're looking at here is the uh, opening uh, the western opening en entrance into the Slate Islands, so we're looking out into uh, Superior. And uh, where I'm headed for is this bay here, I think it's called Copper Bay or Copper Harbor or something similar to that, where uh, apparently there's remnants of an old copper mine somewhere along the shore. Um, it's a, sort of a cave-like entrance that you can go into and stuff, so I'm going to sort of uh, do the circumference of the uh, of the bay and uh, see if I can spot it and see if it's a, in a suitable place to make uh, make landfall and explore it a bit um, this is the end of the uh, that copper bay that uh, I was heading into earlier and um, found a, a really nice spot at the end of the bay. Um, beautiful little beach and someone's built uh, a nice shelter here. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just a pretty little spot so I'm just gonna see if there's some trails around and do a bit of a uh, bit of exploring. More of day two, sailing to the Slate Islands, one reef uh, in the main. The uh, wind has uh, piped up a bit. It was almost a flat calm earlier in the day. But... All right. I'm uh, trying to make for this little cove, but I, I think there's actually a cabin in the, uh, in the inside of it. And uh, I may spend the night in the cove, not in the cabin, hopefully I'll just uh, anchor the boat and, uh, and do that. I've just slowly uh, been working my way upwind. And the fog has really rolled in. <laughs> you could hardly, would, would hardly think that this is uh, mid to towards the end of July. The 
is 5 degrees. The air, even though the rest of southern Ontario is having a, a heat wave right now, the air is being cooled by this uh, 5 degree water. I'm pretty much wearing every stitch. So here's the uh, little cove that we just pulled into, uh, still day two of the uh, of the trip, and uh, wow, what a beautiful spot! Sheltered basically from every wind direction except uh, a very narrow opportunity right down the uh, the mouth of the the opening here. Uh, really nice shelter, and uh, I'll show you the amenities inside, but. Uh, Someone has been thoughtful enough to uh, leave some wood and some kindling, which is uh, the right way of doing things. And uh, further to that, I'll just show you inside here. This is a pretty remote area. So someone has been, uh, well, apart from leaving some uh, nice artwork, Someone's been thoughtful enough to leave a few supplies. A can of beans. Some uh, fire starter bricks. A little bit of toilet paper, paper towels. Uh, some electrical tape. A few little odds and ends that uh, someone in a, in a pinch might find useful. So. Good stuff, and what a nice spot to get uh, in out of the rain. Well, I'm going to spend the night uh, at anchor tonight here, and uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll do some more exploring. So from that uh, shelter, there was a, a trail went up into the hill, which I, I followed. Here and actually comes to the outside of this island, so we're out looking uh, looking towards the east on Superior. Another foggy day, but here's something interesting. Well, an, uh, another interesting thing. A set of very fresh tracks. They look like cloven hooves to me. I don't believe there are deer on these islands. But there are caribou. And these look pretty fresh, like fresh enough that uh, I may have just pushed one ahead of me and off the beach here. The tracks kind of go off in, uh, in that direction. And there's a whole bunch down there by those birds. And maybe if I just hang out in that shelter for a little bit or stay at anchor on the boat and be quiet for a bit, maybe we'll get to see a caribou. That'd be super cool. That was one of my, uh, apart from just exploring and having fun on the sailboat and stuff, but that was one of my uh, big aspirations to be able to see some woodland caribou on this trip. Okay, here you can get a much uh, better resolution on this. So we've got what looks to be a young one, and then a big one. And if there's a mummy with a baby around, maybe I should mind my P's and Q's around here <laughs> for a little bit. Anyways, super cool. So the shelter is, uh, I don't know, 20 meters or 30 meters down that path. And back here we have a, a very nice thunderbox and an old outhouse. So in case you're wondering what a thunderbox is, this is a box in which a person can sit and thunder. But it's located nicely away from, uh, from the lake and with some privacy and uh, much better than uh, going in a bucket on the boat and then having to 
haul it around so I can dig a hole or dispose of it in a toilet or something. <laughs> and just come ashore at one of these uh, shelters and start taking care of business. Uh, two in the morning, July 19th. Crazy lightning storm. It's been going on for about 15 minutes. Seems mostly cloud to cloud. Got a set of jumper cables, well, half a set of jumper cables hooked up to the port shroud and dangling in the water. But there's nowhere to hide on this boat. <laughs> if we get hit. So, we shall see. There's actually a lot less lightning now than there was about 10 minutes ago. I still hear a lot of thunder though. I guess you've got the gist of it. <laughs> Nighty night. So it's late morning on day three of our uh, little Slate Island adventure. And, uh, still the same little uh, anchorage from yesterday. Had a massive lightning uh, thunderstorm last night. Around started around two in the morning. Probably went till about. 2.30 or so. Just lightning everywhere. It's totally crazy. But uh, came through that okay. Our gigantic Bruce anchor uh, <laughs> held as expected. And uh, it was just cold and overcast and raining all morning so I just stayed hunkered up or hunkered down. I don't know if you can hunker up. Anyways, hunkered down in the uh, in the cabin and didn't have much motivation to get out of bed because it was just miserable this morning. But uh, about to start having a late breakfast. We got a pot of water boiling, have some uh, instant cereal and some tea. And then think about maybe uh, trying to head out and find some shattered cones or something to look at. I don't want to stray too far from here because there's supposed to be more thunderstorms this afternoon and more heavy rain which is coming up soon. Um, it's supposed to clear this evening and be sunny tomorrow so we'll see what that brings but I think today is going to be kind of a slack day and uh, it's going to try to stay warm and dry and uh, see if I can see a, a few things here and there. Anyway that is all. So I'm on the beach on the outside of the Slate Island, so we're looking out into Superior here, and uh, it's an interesting uh, rock formation. You can see the, uh, the layers in this rock are all running vertically, which is not normal. <laughs> like this whole rock face is like that. I'm suspecting... Uh, this is remnants of the meteor strike a billion or three years ago that formed all of these islands that uh, basically blasted all of this rock out and up and I guess sent things topsy-turvy. Pretty cool. Hopefully uh, if this fog clears at some point 
I'll be able to go out and uh, the inside of the Slate Islands and there's some cliff faces, probably not dissimilar from this, but where uh, something called the shatter cones are, are visible. And that's where, I guess, cone-shaped formations, I don't know if they go like this or if they're like in that fashion, I guess we'll find out if I see them, but uh, the rock being shattered by the blast of this meteor um, has formed these cones and apparently some are like 30 feet tall and stuff like that. So, more exploring to do. Some friends coming for lunch. Well, day three, I actually have a little bit of blue sky, finally. Massive, massive thunderstorms overnight. Pouring rain and cold and wet and foggy all morning, but it started to clear up a bit. And uh, so we're just doing a little bit of uh, poking around and exploring. And we'll see if this weather holds up. Yeah, the goal for the moment is to look for some uh, shatter cones, which I think uh, would be kind of down at the end and to the left. I think there are some, some cliffs and might be able to see some there. And it looks like there's a, a cabin or something on the right on the far shore, so I'm going to work my way uh, along that direction. And there's a couple of long bays that I haven't been down into yet. And, uh, uh, right now they're shrouded in that fog that's blowing by, but anyways, we'll poke around and see what we can see. So just up there is uh, about the only bald cliff face that I can see around here. So hopefully that's the uh, Shattered Cones location. So we'll uh, sail up, up to that and see what we can see and then see if we can beat our way out of here because we're basically sailing downwind onto a bit of a lee shore here. Alright, here's the uh, here's the cliff face. Now, to be perfectly honest, I'm not really sure what a shattered cone is supposed to look like. So if I'm seeing one, well, I guess your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I guess what we need here is a geologist. Well, there does seem to be actually right around there a darker colored V-shaped structure that's the point of it is going down into the water. Maybe that's what we're looking for. Alright, I've got to pay attention to where this boat's going for a second and uh, I'll try a slightly closer pass on, uh, on the opposite tack in a sec here. Okay, well this is about as close as I dare get. I suspect that V-shaped thing is a shatter cone. I don't know, I'll have to do some uh, ugling later and once I get back into civilization and see what we're looking at here. Kind of cool. And uh, all right, so now I got to figure out how I'm going to sail my way up there. <laughs> we'll see it. Okay, well, there go our shattered cones. Uh, the solution to pulling ourselves out of this blocked in bay was to uh, quickly put up a uh, single reefed main sail. to windward and this boat goes to windward reasonably well so we could have no problems uh, pulling ourselves out 
basically just needed to to tack into that up into that corner and then we're coming back across and uh, the next leg which I'll tack momentarily here should pretty much have our backs to the uh, to that cliff face maybe I'll keep rolling while I do this see if I can do this one handed so that one goes over jib gets released sorry about the shaky camera I'm doing this one handed and we come over to the other side and uh, basically we accelerate away I'm going to need a second hand to uh, cleat this jib down properly but you kind of get the idea now we're moving you know, pretty much directly away from, uh, from the cliff face so we'll just do that a bunch more times until we uh, make it way up into uh, to those channels there See ya! So not too long later, uh, we've managed to come all the way up to, I believe this place is called uh, Devil's Roost. I think there's a, that's a sunken barge, I believe. I kind of thought there was supposed to be a cabin around here somewhere. We just pulled into the wind shadow of this uh, little island. And uh, I think I'm going to try to go down to the end of that bay and just see what's down there. And actually with these uh, west, uh, northwest winds, might be a good spot to spend the night too. Oh, there actually is uh, one of those shelters, rain shelter type things there. So that's cool. That's very good to know. Doesn't look like an easy place to put in anywhere. I don't really see a dock. It's uh, only certain wind directions would it be kind of useful, but very good to know we got it. So I'm anchored now at the end of Jack's Bay. I believe that's what it's called. A long, skinny bay that kind of just abruptly ends there's a, a very narrow way out um, you can either go to the left side which shows bigger water now or to the right side of a little island there and uh, plenty of depth though I was probably at least in six or eight feet uh, the whole way so We'll just stop for a little break and maybe a, a bit of dinner and decide if we spend the night here or continue poking around. You can see that, but check out the, uh, the fog swirlies, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Fog is blowing by and uh, they're getting into the, the turbulence caused by some of the, uh, the high, uh, high hills and, and cliffs around here. They're undulating and getting <laughs> put into kind of a neat pattern. Pretty cool. Well, it's morning of day four. Um, had a relatively calm and easy night, except for a zillion mosquitoes in the cabin. So I was in my uh, bug screamings there and uh, just hearing a cacophony all night. I wasn't getting chomped, but good grief, were they ever noisy little buggers. But uh, today has dawned fair and warm ish it's maybe seven or eight degrees which is better than every other day so far and uh so i've just left my anchorage way down at the very end of that bay and uh to the left around that point is another similar bay that i haven't been down yet so i probably won't be able to sail uh sail down there it'll be probably dead up wind 
and fairly narrow, so probably too narrow to short tack back and forth. But anyways, I'm going to go to the end of that bay and uh, maybe have some brekkie and uh, see what the day brings. It's supposed to be increasing uh, wind up into the 50 and 60 kilometer an hour range. So we'll see if, uh, if that happens or not. Hopefully not quite that strong, but uh, we'll do some more poking around and exploring after breakfast at some point. But so far, totally gorgeous day and the fog is lifted. So yay! motoring along now because we're heading dead upwind. Uh, it came from uh, out that way and heading down to the end of Lawrence Bay. We'll see what's down there anchorage wise and that kind of thing. May, uh, may drop the hook and have some breakfast down there before getting on with the day. It's always a big relief when the motor turns off. <laughs> well, I'm at the very end of uh, Lawrence Bay and uh, just anchored just anchored off the stern in pretty deep water. Like you can see how close I am to shore. Um, the anchor, which is just behind the boat here, is um, probably in about 30, 35 feet of water. So a lot of the anchorages here are super deep and uh, the water comes up abruptly right at shore in, in many places. That can be a good or a bad thing. It, you know, it means there's not a whole lot to hit out here when you're sailing and stuff, but uh, it can be a bit of a challenge to find a good spot to anchor. But what a gorgeous spot. So just finished having breakfast. About to sip on some tea and, uh, and we'll sail back down and out into the uh, outer part of, uh, of the island and find a spot to stop for lunch and uh, know, see what we feel like doing today. Nice having options and nice being out of the fog. Got the solar panel going, batteries charged, charging our VHF with an inverter, and I'll top my phone up in a few minutes. Life is good. So here's something kind of cool. I made this uh, drogue, uh, I don't know, many months ago, sort of in the early spring, late winter, to use as a, uh, a slowing down drag device behind the boat. Uh, cone shaped and all that kind of thing and it sat in a bag and uh, I've never used it and I thought uh, today I'd actually put it in the water and see if it uh, if it would be stable and uh, you know ride nicely and and if the mouth of it would stay open or not and it has done all of those things um, yeah works great and the little bridle that I, uh, I built for it to attach it to the boat works nicely as well I'm super happy. It's uh, you know, it's not meant to be a sea anchor. It's just uh, to be used in heavier conditions, uh, which I've been in a couple of times where I've wanted to slow the boat down and uh, couldn't reduce sail anymore <laughs> and keep the stern to uh, to the waves. And I think this shall do it. Uh, of course, this is supposed to be on a 60 foot long tether. Um, it's not supposed to be immediately behind the boat like this. So let's pull it up and see what we've got. Comes out of the water, no fuss at all. And it's just a, um, a ripstop nylon cone. Small opening at one end and large opening at the other and I took some care to uh, to balance all the all the leads and everything uh, to try to get equal pressure 
on everything and uh, seems to work. So that's sweet. We can put that in our bag of uh, tested tricks. Wow, what a beautiful day. Fog is long gone and for a change we can actually uh, see what we're looking at around here. Just working my way up uh, again into um, Copper Harbor. Um, at the end where we're looking right around to the left is where that uh, shelter is. And I think I'm going to spend the night in this little bay. Maybe go and uh, have a little lunch ashore or something. And uh, uh, just enjoy the, the scenery. There's a bald eagle flying around somewhere here. I saw him a few minutes ago and could hear him uh, screeching and stuff. And the last cove I was at, the ducks were swimming and the fish were jumping. And man, what a beautiful place. Life is good. Oh, happy day on the beach and sunny and reasonably warm. About to uh, sit down and uh, enjoy a little uh, lunch and perhaps a wobbly pop. Well deserved. <laughs> it's been quite a trip so far. Well, it's departure day today. It's about uh, 7.30 a.m. Uh, we just pulled up anchor from our little spot in uh, Copper Harbor. And uh, we're gonna head out um, through the western uh, entrance slash exit uh, to the slates. And uh, basically we're gonna go around the point that way. Uh, Put the mainsail up hopefully and uh, tack our way out of the slates, make a, a hard right and point back to Terrace Bay and uh, should have a beam or broad reach probably most of the way or all the way uh, to Der Terrace Bay from, from, from there. So hopefully it should be a relatively easy and uh, enjoyable sail. It's a lovely morning out here. Cold as usual but we've got some sun and it doesn't look like there's any fog around here so I think we're in for a pleasant trip. Well we're still having a motor for the moment. Just have to uh, make that point there, and then we'll uh, be able to get the sails up and stuff. There's still a little wind that uh, it would take forever trying to beat out against this uh, old incoming uh, swell from the westerly winds that blew all night long. So we'll just burn a few dinosaurs and uh, wait till we get around that point there. Oh well. So we are now officially on the outside of the slates. Got the uh, the main up, and uh, just waiting for some wind to fill in. It's uh, we're basically just bouncing around a little bit on the remnants of uh, the, the swell from uh, last night's wind. We're expecting sort of a, a west or southwest wind to fill in. And I don't know if you can see, but in the, the distance from the, uh, the, the smoke from the uh, pulp plant in uh, Terrace Bay is is streaming along nicely in a, in a direction that would be favorable for us. So we kind of just need to wait for that to uh, 
fill in for us and then we should be able to make our way. In the meantime, we'll just uh, enjoy the sun <laughs> and the temperatures are uh, slightly warming and, and just enjoy what little time we've got left out here. Well, it didn't take too long for uh, the breeze to fill in um, from a different direction than I was expecting, but still a very favorable direction. So now we're uh, under full main and, uh, and jib and heading, uh, well, on the planned compass course. <laughs> when, I, when I left, of course, we were in dense fog and I literally I could see nothing, like no landmarks, no nothing, or no anything, as we made our way to the slate. So I'm not 100% sure uh, where on the coast I'm aiming for, so I'm just going to uh, trust my compass, and as we get closer, I'm sure the uh, Harris Bay uh, beach pavilion and uh, and the beach itself will make itself uh, visible. We still we're still about maybe six or seven nautical miles away, so that's, uh, that's a good ways away. And actually, it, it, for structures that are right on on the uh, like right right at the the waterline kind of thing, that puts it from here basically right at the uh, or maybe even just below the curvature of the Earth. <laughs> so. We'll give it a, a little bit of time, and as we get closer, I'm sure things will resolve themselves. We're feeling fairly slowly, um, and maybe two or three knots. It's feeling as though things will will pick up, and I suspect as we get closer, we're going to uh, have a bit of a shift. Like right now, we're into uh, sort of south east or south southeast winds. And it's kind of expecting southwest, so we'll see if that shifts uh, as we uh, as we mosey along. I guess we'll check in a bit later. Well, things have been uh, continuing to be light and and fickle out here. Uh, now we're running uh, wing on wing, straight down wind, and uh, I just uh, was able through the binoculars. You won't be able to see it on this. Uh, this camera, but I was just able to see the uh, the roof line of the uh, sort of the recreational uh, pavilion building, whatever at uh, Terrace uh, Bay Beach. So it uh, it definitely was below the horizon uh, a while back there, because we can only just see the uh, the very tops of the uh, <laughs> of the roof line and not the actual. Uh, uh, face of the of the building yet, but but uh, now I basically know exactly where I'm pointing, and uh, and the compass course was pretty much right on. So yeah, all is good. We're just uh, not making any uh, land speed or water speed records here, which might put me a little bit behind the time frame for. Uh, you know, getting in, loaded up, and uh, and on the road, but that's okay. We're uh, not in any gigantic rush. Okay, now we've got the jib pulled out. It is much better behaved now, and uh, with it no longer slatting, we probably picked up a knot. Which, uh, considering how slowly we're going, is a large percentage. And off we go. So way ahead in the distance. I can now, you might not be able to on camera here, but I can now make out 
the whole building and the waterfront break wall beach area. And uh, yeah, we're still sliding along slowly, wing on wing. And our old friend is getting more and more distant. Definitely you've picked a nice day for making this open water uh, little transit. And yeah, it is uh, open water. There's nothing out there for, I don't know how far it is. Probably, uh, I would probably guess like 70 or 100 miles or something until you uh, reach the U.S. side way down there. So. Kind of big water around here. Okay, folks, here's the uh, entrance past the break wall and sandbar. It's rather rocky and shallow, and I've never done this in uh, invisibility. So, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> Coming into uh, into the docks. Then we'll uh, de-rig, bring the uh, trailer down, and uh, pull her out of the water. Guess we can call that a successful. And I just have to uh, not smash into the docks. <laughs> I'm sure that will not be an issue. Good trip. <laughs>